Hello, for this video we're going to do a quick introduction to rate of change. So the learning goals for this video are to be introduced to the concept of rate of change, to understand what a rate of change means in context, and to learn how to calculate rate of change given the graph of a linear relation. So we're going to start with um, a quick example here. We have a graph of earnings versus time worked for Mario and his brother Luigi. Now I don't know if you know, but these two guys are plumbers. That's why they go down those green pipes. Um, so maybe this is, uh, these are their earnings through their plumbing business. Um, so let's just look at Mario's red graph here. Um, I noticed that his graph starts at zero. Um, so when he doesn't work, he doesn't earn any money, which is true of most jobs. Um, after one hour, though, he earns $20, and after two hours, he earns $40. After three hours, he earns $60. Just by looking at this graph, I can tell then because if he's going, you know, every hour he's going up $20, so he earns $20 per hour. Now, if we take a look at Luigi's graph, um, again, when he doesn't work, he doesn't earn any money, but after an hour of working, he earns $10. After two hours, it goes up to $20. After three hours, then it goes up to $30. So his rate is uh, $10 per hour. Maybe Luigi's just not as good of a plumber as his brother is. Um, so that's an example of what we call a rate of change. Um, Mario's earnings are changing at a rate of $20 per hour. And for Luigi, his earnings are changing as well. And they're at a rate of $10 per hour. So that's one way of calculating the rate that um, earnings is changing. Um, if we look at an, a second example here, um, we have cost versus months on a cell phone plan. Uh, now this graph is a little bit different in that the graph doesn't start at the corner here. It actually starts at 100. So um, before you even use the phone, it already costs you $100. So that could be an activation fee or maybe that could be the uh, cost of a phone. Who knows? Um, but um, after a month, I noticed, though, that the cost goes up to 150 After two months, it goes up to uh, $200. And after three months, it goes up to uh two hundred and fifty dollars so it seems like every month uh, that you go on this plan it goes up by fifty dollars and in fact that is the rate of change of cost per month fifty dollars per month now that's pretty obvious um, uh, from uh, looking at this graph however um, there is also another method that might work if um, it's not easy to see right away and this uh, method is called the rise over run method. So we're going to learn how to do that today. Now, the way that we do this is that we um, need to pick two points along this graph, any two points, um, provided that you can read the values of it pretty easily. So uh, this one's usually a good one. Um, this is at zero months and $100 on the cost. And let's pick another point and they usually want to pick a point that is on a corner of the grid so that you can read it pretty easily. So I notice that this point here, um, it's five months on the cell phone plan and it's $350 for the cost. Now uh, using this method, again we first pick any two points and what we're going to do is we're going to connect these two points uh, using a vertical line first and then a horizontal line second. So this gra uh, these two points, uh, to join them, I have to start uh, at this point at uh, 0 and 100, and I have to go up all the way to 350. And then I go to the side. And what I create is, is a triangle um, made up of a vertical and a horizontal line here. Now, this, sorry, this vertical line is what we call the rise. And the reason why we call that the rise is because it's going up and down, sort of like how the sun rises. And we have here a horizontal line, which we call the run. And we call it a run because, I guess, people run side to side. Um, now, um, if I find out what the uh, vertical and the horizontal distances are, I can use this division of rise over run to come up with the rate. 
Um, so I notice that this graph starts at 100 and it goes up to 350 in terms of the cost. So the distance here um, is uh, from 100 to 200, so that's 100. And then from 200 to 300, that's another 100, so that's already 200. And then I have half, so that's 250. So the rise here is 250. Now let's look at the run. It's going from 0 over to 5. So the run here is 5. So let's fill that in um, on our solution. So the rise here is equal to, now I just replaced the word rise with the vertical distance here, which we calculated as 250. And uh, the rise is in dollars, because I can see that from the axis. And the run here is 5. So it's 250 divided by 5. And uh, the units are months. So if we divide 250 with 5, I get 50. And then notice that I have uh, dollars on the top and months on the bottom. So it's $50 per month, which is exactly what we uh, knew already. Okay? But this is just uh, another method of calculating the rate of change. We uh, pick two points. Okay? Uh, which actually we can fill it in here. So this is the success criteria for calculating the rate of change. The first thing that we need to do is to choose any two points along the graph. Now you want to pick two points that um, that you can read the values of very clearly. So pick points that are on the grid, uh, on the corners of the grid. The next thing you want to do is to determine the vertical distance, which we call the rise, as well as the horizontal distance, which we call the run. And once we have that, we're going to calculate rise over run, okay. or which we would write rise divided by run like that. We're going to do some more examples, so uh, hopefully it'll be more clear um, in a little bit. Now note that the greater the rate of change, so let's go back to Mario for a second. Mario earned $20 per hour, and Luigi only earned 10 So Mario has a greater rate of change. And uh, if we take a look at the graph here, Mario's graph is steeper than Luigi's graph. Mario is earning money faster, so his line is going up faster. So it looks like the graph is steeper. So the greater the rate of change, the steeper the line. Now, let's just do another example here. We have uh, the rate of change. We want to find out the rate of change in savings for Mr. Moneybag's bank account. Um, so again, we're going to use the uh, success criteria to calculate the rate of change. Um, uh, now, I, I feel like we probably need to do that because um, after one month, which is just one square, it goes down a certain amount, but I can't really tell what that is. So I might need to use this rise over run method. Okay, so the rate of change, okay, which I'll just say rate, is equal to rise over run. And remember, just from our success criteria, we need to pick two points, any two points. It doesn't matter which ones, as long as we can read them clearly. So um, here, let's for fun, let's not use that starting point. Let's use this point here, okay, because I can see that point clearly. That's three months and $1,200. Um, and... Um, Let's take a look at another point over here. Okay. So that's nine months and $800. So once I pick two points, I want to calculate the horizontal and vertical distance between these two points. So I have to go down and then over to the right. And I've created this triangle. So I want to figure out the rise here, okay, or the vertical distance. So um, from 1,200 down one square, that's 100, 200, 300, 400. So the rise here is 400. Now, the thing is, is that this is a little bit different. You notice that this line is going down, whereas the other graphs here were going up. So the rise here, we were going up, but this graph, the, 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 the rise is actually decreasing. Notice I have to go from this point, I have to go down to reach the second point. So the rise here isn't actually 400. It's actually negative 400 because I have to go down. So if positive means going up, negative means that you're going down. 
Um, the run here starts at three months and goes to nine months. So, and also every square seems to mean one month. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six months. So the rise was negative 400 and the uh, negative 400 dollars. Uh, let's put the dollar sign there. And this is six months. And then when we divide 400 with six, I believe you get $66.67 per month. Okay, now, we wouldn't be able to get that just by using that, uh, the simple um, looking at the graph and, and um, seeing how much it goes up or down by every month. Now, notice that when the line goes down, now negative 400 divided by 6, this should be negative. Okay, here, let's use an eraser here. Let's clean that up a bit. So this is negative $66.67 per month. If you divide a negative and a positive number, you should get a negative number. So when the line goes down, the rate of change is actually negative. If we take a look at the rate of change in the, um, the this question here, let's say, the cost is going up $50 per month. So it's, that's a positive value. But when a value is going down, Okay, then the rate should be negative. So if a line is going down, that means these numbers are decreasing, which means that the rate has to be negative. All right, I'd like you to try this question yourself. So calculate the rate of change in distance with respect to time from the graph. I'd like you to try to use the success criteria to um, calculate the rate of change. So just follow those steps. Um, if, uh, I would uh, recommend you pause the video now uh, give the question a try, and then when you're ready to see um, the answer, just press play. All right, so let's uh, just take up the question. Uh, the success criteria says in order to find the rate of change, we want to pick two points. So it could be any two points that we can read off very easily. So um, the point in the, in the beginning is usually one that you can read, and I see I have this, oh, let's, let's go big. Let's go to this point here. Remember, it doesn't matter what two points you pick. Okay? The answers will always be the same. Um, so uh, I pick two points and I connect them using this kind of triangle. So I go uh, a rise here. Um, so from 300 to 400, so that's 100 and that's 200. And then from here, from 0 to 10, of course, the rise, I'm sorry, the run is 10. All right, now we're going to use the rate of change is equal to rise over run. Now the rise here okay, appears to be 200, and we're going to keep the units here, that's kilometers, divided by the run here is 10 hours. When we divide 200 with 10, we get 20 kilometers per hour. Um, the reason why we want to keep the units is because it's providing some sort of a context, some sort of meaning here. So um, the rate of change from a distance with respect to time here is actually a speed. Okay? So this person is going uh, 20 kilometers per hour. Okay. Let's try another question. Um, this is um, this question is asking you again to calculate the rate of change in distance uh, with respect to time. So this is height above the ground. Uh, so again, pause the video, give the question a try, and when you're ready to see how you did, uh, press play. Okay. Um, again, we're going to pick two points, any two points. Um, so here, let's be adventurous. Let's pick this point here, and uh, oh, I don't know this point here. And once we pick two points, we connect the two okay, using a vertical and a horizontal line. So the rise, okay, let's write the rate is equal to rise over run. So the rise here is uh, from 600 down to 400. So that is a rise of negative 200. Now, again, it's negative because you have to go down to get to the next point. Okay. Also, I know, it's, uh, I know that the rise has to be negative because I notice this graph is decreasing. So the rise here is negative 200 uh, meters. 
divided by, and then from 10 over to 50, so that's 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes. Okay. So, so the run here is 40 minutes. And when we divide the 200 with 40, we should get, or negative 200 with 40, we should get negative 5 meters per minute. So uh, we get meters because uh, on the top and minutes on the bottom. Okay. And again, it has to be negative because this rate uh, or the graph is decreasing. Okay, so let's just sum up what we've done here today. Uh, relations are linear when the graph is a straight line. Um, the rate of change of a variable can be calculated by choosing two points okay, and using rise over run. So I would just make sure that you understand the success criteria that you need to calculate the rate of change. Now, if the line goes up or rises to the right, then the rate of change is positive. And if the line is decreasing, okay, that means the values are going down. So then the rate has to be negative. And again, uh, looking at Mario versus a Luigi, the steeper the line, the greater the rate of change. Okay. So hopefully this uh, video um, uh, taught you how to um, understand and calculate rate of change. And um, thanks for watching.